07 Citizens, Black here from Castle Black Gaming, hoping everyone is doing well and enjoying your time out in the verse. Here is my 2024 Top 10 Daily Drivers for Solo Players at Star Citizen list. Now 2024 is about to be a game changing year for the verse and with so many new ships having come out since my last Top 10 Daily Drivers Star Citizen video, I thought it was a good time to update the list. Now keep in mind this video is more aimed at a solo player or maybe even two player teams and the loose definition of a daily driver here is a ship that can offer up at least two to three different gameplay options and not solely a specific role but with options. I don't know about you guys but I love options. With more advanced features now in the game such as the massive cargo changes we've seen over the past few months not to mention derelict outpost and more coming in the future I think this list is a good one to give new players some idea of the most used ships for these varying purposes. This list does not have a cost limit so I'm not capping this as the best ships under $100 or even $200 but just the ships that I know players can fly solo and still get a lot of use out of with these ships covering many facets of the game. So with the explanations out of the way let's go ahead and get to the list in no particular order. Now whenever someone asks me which ship they can do combat well in and yet also break into some cargo or delivery missions, I of course ask them how much they are willing to spend and if that amount is around $60, I do not hesitate to tell them to try out the Avenger Titan. This was the first ship that I upgraded to from the Aurora which only took me a day to realize that the Aurora was just not for me. Now one thing about my favorite ships is that I prefer back ramps over elevators. If a ship also has a secondary entry point such as a ladder around the cockpit, even better. And the Titan has both. You will not make a lot of money doing cargo runs with this, but this ship can make you a lot of in-game credits to buy something that can run you some good cargo, such as some of the other ships on this list. The Titan flies extremely well, and with its size 4 and 2 size 3 hardpoints, you can outfit some major firepower to take back bounties down all the way up the chain. Its two shields are also great for its size and this is a ship that so many of us use for years and has yet to be dethroned for its price per function, especially for someone learning more about combat. After taking out some of those bounties, you can also pack in some of the goods you find in their cargo hold so long as you don't exceed the 8 SCU of storage, which again for its size and cost is a good amount of storage allowing you to have a nice little daily driver. Now ever since the Cutter came on the scene late 2022, it has absolutely taken over my pick as the best starter ship to buy, especially for a new player. But I think most players who keep a ship of this size in their hangar have also made this a must own ship. There are currently three variants out and the original Cutter is still my personal choice. But when it comes to a ship that can do a little bit of everything and also flies well and has a nice size living quarters including a bathroom and decent cargo space not to mention a ramp in the back and is just cute to boot, the Cutter is just a great daily driver. Now for SCU of cargo, while sure it's less than the 8 SCU of cargo that the Titan has, the Cutter is not as good in combat as the Titan either, but the Cutter is also around 25% cheaper and can be a great start for a new player to learn the ropes of the verse and also to learn about traversing the many locations within the game all while giving a player the freedom to take on some cargo, delivery, bunkers, and even some minor bounties. The Drake Cutter is a great ship to build upon and give citizens an idea of where they want to go or what ships they might want to earn up to. Okay, so rounding out the starter ship feeling ships is the all new Gatak Su Lin. This ship is similar to a couple of ships on this list, including the next one, but what sets it apart is that it is the only legit alien designed starter ship, and so for those players who want that vibe, this ship made the list. Now it might not have a large interior cargo bay, which will limit some forms of gameplay, but it does have 6 SEU of exterior cargo space, and the living quarters inside, complete with a bathroom, are great. Aesthetically, this ship is one of the coolest looking both inside and out, and I just love the lighting. 
Where I do want to offer up a bit of caution though is with landing and taking off. This is the first ship to use the vertical cockpit style of flight, so for new players you will get accustomed to flying the ship a certain way, and yet if you fly any other ship in the verse, you will not feel comfortable, and vice versa. For those who have flown every other ship, you might have some awkwardness landing and taking off with this ship. Now I've seen many people grab this ship when it first came out, only to upgrade or melt it to something else because of the flight mechanic, so it's a valid concern, but still this ship deserves Deserves to be on this list to give players that choice if they want to try it out. All right, so now that we're moving beyond basic starter ships needs, this is one of those ships that bridges the starter ship and medium specialty daily drivers. This ship is as unique as it is robust, offering up amazing space both interior and externally for storage. The design language is something I happen to like a lot, and this is one of those ships I at first was not a fan of, but has consistently grown on me over the last couple of years. While some cannot get over the truck bed cargo space in the back, it has proven time and time again to be very agile and what it can carry for those explorers who like to experiment and with the recent changes to cargo and loot we can get off ships it has come into its own even more so now add to this the fact that it offers up some multiplayer gameplay and you have a very good for the value ship that is many citizens daily driver or the stepping stone to a better daily driver and with the nomad you cannot go wrong Even though the Misk Freelancer is in need of some gold standard love, it is still a great daily driver and comes in a variety of flavors to suit most players needs. Now I have some quips with this ship but it is still a beast and offers up some very great bang for the buck with large storage capacity, decent living quarters, and depending on the version you get, some very good damage for combat. It's also a great multiplayer ship for those in need of that gameplay. Medium multiplayer ships are pretty much all the rage for most players as you will see with our next couple of picks and the freelancer series has been a mainstay daily driver for years now Although the Drake series of ships is often the butt of many jokes, there's a reason there are so many out in the verse, and another reason why there are three Drake ships that made this list. The Cutlass series of ships will always be seen at almost every station or outpost you go because they are highly functional and a good all-around daily driver. Whether you're looking for a great daily driver for cargo carrying and solo or two-player bounties, or you just want to do some medical gameplay, or maybe even some soon-to-be live bounty capturing, and let's not forget the highly flawed cutlass steel, which most will agree is not worth its high price tag and cannot really take enough of a beating to be a decent dropship, but I do appreciate the effort and I hope it will one day be improved upon. The Cutlass Black has one of my favorite features in a game, especially for doing ship to ground combat, such as derelict outposts, and that are side opening doors, which makes great spots for snipers. Now whether you're towing a mining rock around to do some land mining or helping your fellow citizens get healed, the Cutlass line has been probably the most popular medium-sized daily driver for a while now, but is it going to hold on to that title much longer? I cannot overstate enough how much of an impact the newest Crusader medium cargo ship has had on the verse. Although the A1 has a nice little niche with it being a bomber, it's been the C1 that has made the biggest splash in the daily driver scene, and it's only been around for a single patch now. I see screenshots show up daily on Instagram and Twitter of the C1, with many raving about it and saying they will not be getting rid of theirs anytime soon. In fact, there is another medium freight ship we should be seeing coming out later this year, the Zeus MK2, which will will be better than the C1 in some ways, and yet I have a feeling that the Spirit will continue to be a favorite for many. I for one am happy to see the medium ship line being filled out more as more options will lead to more happy citizens. Again, the C1 can do cargo and also is okay at bounties and makes a great one-two punch to take out bounties and gather up any loot left behind in pirated cargo holds. Would we like to see more variants of the Spirit? Now I absolutely would love a medical variant or or an all-out combat version with more missiles and maybe a manned under turret, but let's get those Zeus ships out first. 
All right, so now let's get into a large ship that makes for a great solo to duo daily driver. Now there is a reason why I did not include the entire Constellation class here. While the Phoenix is a great ship, you really benefit more from having two to three players for daily use on that one. And I for one went with the Taurus for its soloable play and larger cargo hold versus more weapons, not to mention the price was a good bit less, at least before the recent price hike, but it's still not badly priced. I loved my Taurus and even when the next ship was released, the Corsair, there, I held on to mine. Well, that is until I began having issues with the elevator where looted salvage items like guns would fall through, and then I switched to another ship with a ramp, but I still love my Taurus for doing better cargo hauls and also bounties. Now as a solo player, you get four size 5 guns. While not as many for the pilot to control as the next ship, they were still enough to get many jobs done. Now add to that the cool design, decent living quarters, ability to carry the Ursa rover or two rock mining vehicles, and you have a great daily driver that can stay out for weeks at a time. I will own a Constellation class ship again one day and it most likely will be the Taurus. This ship could have easily been called the Wrecking Ball because of how hard it comes in. Giving a pilot six guns to shoot is just insane and allows many players to solo top tier bounties with ease. Now if you combine that with the 72 SU of storage, two entry points, crew quarters, captain quarters, and a kitchen and bathroom and roof access, and you have one of the best if not the best multi-crew ship in its class and it's the third Drake ship on this list. This ship came along and made others almost obsolete and with its ace symmetrical design it has made people either an instant fan or an instant hater. Regardless of how you feel about owning it, you cannot deny the impact this ship has had on the verse. Its functionality is making it probably the new most used daily driver ship in the game. Now before I get to the last ship in this top 10 daily driver list, I wanted to first give some honorable mentions that, while did not make my top 10 list, are still some great options to consider. The C8R Pisces is a ship I will always own. It does not have much in the way of cargo, but its healing bed and ability to be called out at mining outposts makes it a must have. The Crusader MSR is another large ship that has some great medium ship roles, is great to fly, and a fun multiplayer ship to own, but still needs some work for some of its unreleased features. The Valkyrie is a ship that can do a lot of what a Cutlass can do, but at a more expensive price. But still though, it's a great all-rounder ship that many enjoy flying. The Origin 300 line of ships are sleek, stylish, and a great ship for new players who prefer the finer things in life. Speaking of finer things in life, the 600i is currently getting a redesign and hopefully we'll get an update on it soon. It was recently in the top 4 best in show for 2023 and got one of the best paint jobs for any ship ever and is a great daily driver. And the last honorable mention is the Drake Caterpillar. Now while its cargo might not be as flexible as the next ship on the list, it still has been a beast with salvage and new cargo gameplay. And if you want a pirate daily driver, I recommend it over the number one ship on the list, which is... The Crusader C2 is a ship I feel most citizens should own, whether outright or by paying the 4 point something million it costs in game. I cannot tell you how often I have used this ship since purchasing it, and it is the only ship that can carry both tanks. It can also carry 696 SCU of cargo, which is just insane, and the most interior cargo of any ship currently in the verse. Now I use this for cargo runs, salvage operations, training exercises, you name it, the C2 is a great ship that can be flown solo or with a crew of two or more. Now as far as large ships go, the Hercules handles well and is not a slog to fly out of atmosphere. Whether you are solo or doing group or org play, the Hercules C2 is a must own ship that works as a great daily driver, especially with the newer features that are in the game. Okay, so that is it for this list. Now expect the next daily driver list to have some new additions as we know the Zeus is coming up soon. And with live capture bounty hunting making its way into the game, not to mention Pyro this year, who knows what ships will come off this list or be added. Now until next time, I hope you all stay positive and I'll see you out in the verse.